If you've seen the Pixar movie Up, you'll probably recall that it starts with this beautiful montage of uh, the life of Carl, the grumpy old man in the movie, and his charming wife Ellie. So after showing their first meeting as children, the montage runs through the major events of their life. Their wedding day, fixing up their dream house, learning that they couldn't have children, recovering their childhood dream of exploring the world, you know, weathering the ups and downs of life, and then finally ending with the death of Ellie. And these were the key events that shaped their lives, which revealed who they were and how they became who they became. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie Up, I just recommend you to go see it as soon as possible. It's a great movie, and I haven't given away any spoilers since all this happened in the first 10 minutes. But as I read the first chapter of uh, Bonaventure's Life of Francis, I couldn't help but kind of picture it as a montage scene. You know, we're presented with all of the, this like stream of, of events in St. Francis's early life, almost like images or snapshots of the defining moments uh, which would shape who he would become. And so just to run through a few of these, you know, we see the image of Francis as a young merchant turning away a beggar empty-handed but immediately regretting this and chasing after him to give him alms. We see the image of Francis clothing a poor knight in his own rich garments and then dreaming of a splendid uh, palace and military arms that were to be his reward. We have the image of Francis joining forces with a count, seeking the glory of knighthood, and then having that famous dream where he's asked, who can do more for you, servant or master? Why are you abandoning the Lord for a servant. There's the image of Francis determined, as Bonaventure puts it, to conquer himself in order to be a knight of Christ, overcoming his own horror at leprosy by kissing a leper. And as Francis retreats more and more from the world and seeks the Lord in prayer, we see the image of Francis receiving a vision of Jesus appearing to him nailed on a cross. And finally, we have the image of Francis' deepening love for the poor. You know, he's, he's caring for beggars, poor priests, and we, we have the story of, uh, of him encountering a lot of poor people at the, at the uh, shrine of the Apostle Peter. And uh, again, he gives his clothes away to them and, and experiences great joy. So there seems to be at least a theme also of uh, him giving away his clothes very early on. Um, Anyway, in, in this montage of images from Bonaventure, we find a youth who's sort of pulled in tension between, on the one hand, the foolish ways of the world, you know, the pleasures of the world, and then on the other hand, the, the grace of God that's already working in him. All of these hard, hallmark moments of Francis's early life are the experiences that ultimately shaped who he would become. And since we know the whole story of St. Francis' life, we can hear the echoes of these experiences playing out later in his life, his life of prayer, the centrality of Christ crucified, his commitment to the poor, and his humility. And as we quickly read through all of these experiences with a bird's eye view, uh, it's easy to kind of see the hand of God working in Francis, uniting all of these experiences um, kind of on a thread of grace running through each moment and giving direction to Francis's life. Well, this is certainly gradual and, and indirect. Uh, having taken uh, final vows pretty recently, this idea of God's providence guiding us through our experience is, is something that resonates with me. You know, leading up to the vows, I spent a lot of time reflecting on, on many of these snapshots and images in my own life that led up to that point. And in these moments, there were plenty of questions and struggle, and I, I didn't have any idea where God was leading in this moment. But reflecting in hindsight, you know, at least in my mind, it makes a lot of sense that I ended up here. I can see the God, hand of God silently at work, kind of planting the seeds that would eventually bear fruit and give direction to my life here. So this image is, that for me, a takeaway. Um, that who Francis would eventually become this great saint who we currently strive to follow has its roots in Francis's early life. I like Bonaventure's account of, of, of Francis's early life because it doesn't make him out to be like a complete moral degenerate, where you know 
he was just zapped by God's grace and then suddenly on, on the path of sanctity. You know, God was, uh, you know, Bonaventure really stresses that God was at work from the very beginning. You know, it was the seeds of grace that were planted uh, early in the seeds of his youth that came to fruition gradually and with work, but which prepared him for each new step in his life. Brothers, we have these same seeds of grace planted in us. Now, as we walk or as we stumble through this life, God has already planted the seeds to equip us to face the day. He's planted the seeds for us also to one day become saints.